Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays XCOM 2 where once again I'm having a look at one of the, uh, the, the historical challenge archive missions. And the idea of these is that you ha you're given a sort of an unusual squad and, an un and maybe an unusual let's say, set of enemies and the idea is you have to sort of run around and try and see if you can complete the mission. So I've got a load of chrysalids which are um, un certainly unusual. I'm a little bit concerned that this is going to be a bit like when I played with the berserkers a couple of weeks ago um, because the chrysalids aren't going to be enormously tactical. There's not going to be a huge amount that I can do with them other than just run forwards and try and bite the enemies. But we shall see. Um, it may, there may be some interesting... I don't think I went, went to quite where I wanted it to. Uh, there may be some interesting tactical decisions I need to make at some point with these guys, but I'm not quite sure what those are going to be. We'll just we'll just run them all. So for now, we'll just run them all forwards. We're out of range of those troopers up ahead, but if they move this way, then they'll spot us. But if, but if not, we can charge up towards them and bite their faces off. So, what have we got here? We've got Okay, we've got a stun lancer and a trooper. I think, to be honest, I don't think it makes a lot of difference which one we attack. Let's go in. Let's let's go running in. What have we got? We've got the, um, we've got chrysalid slash and we've got burrow. And burrow, I believe, is where they just dig themselves into the ground. But since we need to actually make make progress, I think we're not going to do that. We'll just run forwards and try and, and try and bite these, um, bite these advent troopers to death. Uh, no, let's go for this one. Run them all the way around there to the edge. Oh, and there's another one around the corner there. So they spotted us, but we can run in, get in and attack there like that. Nice. And we've poisoned that guy, so he's not he's going to be in trouble. Oh, and there's even more of them over here. Interesting. Well, I feel I feel this wasn't a tactical mistake because I am going to need to run forwards in order to get to the um get to the get to the troopers in order to attack them. So we might as well just keep running up and do as much attacking as we can and just see what uh, it's a bit of a shame that we've triggered three pods at once. But I think that was unavoidable. We needed to get in close to the uh, close to the troopers in order to be able to attack them. Uh, so now, I mean, as I said, there's not a huge amount we can do tactically here. It is going to just be a case of run forwards and bite everybody on the face. Uh, I think it's worth trying to finish off the one I've already attacked and, and already slightly injured. So not you, not you. Let's go up and finish this guy off. It's a 70% so chance to hit, so it's not as guaranteed as I was expecting it to be. But we can run over here, we'll give him a bite, see what happens. Okay, he, so he dodged that one, which is a bit of a shame. And have I now run out of chrysalids who are, who are in range of that one? Yes, I have. Okay, that's that's a bit of a shame. So I think now the next thing to do is to be is going to be to go after some of the some of the closer enemies. Let's go after this trooper because I think he's going to be an easy one to um to to uh, he's going to be an easy one to, to kill because he's got less health than the others. Um. Sure, I don't mind if we go through upstairs. That's fine. Oh, and a crit as well. Nice. We've killed that one. Is he going to form a cocoon? Do I get? Am I going to get massive quantities of reinforcements from this, or am I? Is this? Am I somewhat limited with with my enemies? Now, okay, that's a, that's a shame. We don't seem to have done the. Oh no, no, I take it back. There is a cocoon growing there, so we are probably going to get all the reinforcements we can eat. I mean, that can eat them, uh, which is going to be potentially very, very useful. Now, what else we've we got? So most of the enemies now seem to be stun lancers. Uh, apart from uh, there's a captain back there and another troop back there, but we can't get to them. So. Let's just go after the ones that we can get to easily, um, I think. Uh, so, yeah, slash. And apparently we can slash through the wall. That seems like a thing. Oh, um, is it going to open the... Oh, no, just poke him through the, through the, through the wall. That's fine. Um, I wouldn't like to say why we're able to poke them through the walls, but apparently that is a thing we can do, so... Sure, why not? This one makes a bit more sense because it's kicking the door open, and then going in there, and, and missing. Oh, that's the that's the first miss we've had. Now, this the um the I think the chrysalis took a fairly significant nerf between um, XCOM one and uh, between the classic XCOM and the new ones. Um, because I'm pretty sure right, chrysalids in the classic XCOM weren't capable of missing, basically. These ones, on the other hand, well, they've got. Ooh, that's uh, and again only only one point of damage. So now this is going to go fairly unpleasantly. Oh no, they're they're running away. That's interesting. And they're trying to deal with the um, the crystal cocoon. Now that could be quite handy if the cocoon is going to tank all of the attacks. Then that's going to make it a lot less dangerous for my already existent chrysalids. And as we've discovered, these lancers are absolutely terrible at well everything. What's he done? Did he? Oh, he's marked marked it for an attack. Oh, and there's a there's a crit there. That's okay. That's done quite a lot of damage to the cocoon, but never mind, I guess. I can't see. Yeah, they've still still got quite a lot of health left. So unless this lancer manages to hit, okay, it did. Well, 
I mean, that that's fine. We they haven't killed any of my existence troops. It's just that we've got, we've got a potential. Um, ooh, that was quite a hard hit. Uh, just there's just a bit of a uh, just just taking out the uh, the potential reinforcements that I might get every turn. Where's he going? Okay, I think that was two moves, so he's not going to attack. He's been poisoned, so that's good. Uh, so I guess we have a choice here, and so is he. We have a choice here. We can either leave that leave that guy to die next turn from poison, or we can reckon on trying to kill him because he's basically dead already. Because that'll mean we'll get a lot more. Um, we'll get another one of these uh, chrysalid cocoons, and that's another thing for the enemy to worry about. So I think I think that's worth doing. Let's try and kill him. Uh, let's do it from around there. I don't know. Why. I don't know why I'm sending him around, sending this chrysalid around there. I think mostly beca because because I can. He's got the range to get there, so I feel like I might as well. Uh, that didn't work at all. Let's go after this guy. So I know they've got a 70% hit chance, but there we go. Another one. Another one um, turned into turned into a cocoon. And now I absolutely hate that when it happens to my troops. But when it happens to the end, when I'm controlling the chrysalids and it happens to enemies, I I, I, I feel like I'm happy to celebrate the uh, the horribleness of the chrysalids. A crit, six points. Nice. So this, I mean, maybe this to an extent, this makes up for the inaccuracies of, uh, in, of some of the earlier ones. If they if they either miss or crit, then I'm um, I can't complain too much. There we go, another crit, and I think that's probably going to be a fatality. Yes, it is. So it's taken him down. Now I've got how many have I got left? One, two, three, three left. That might be enough for another kill. Um, let's go after this trooper in the middle here because it, I, there's not going to be any any problems the, the enemies aren't going to have any difficulties getting to my chrysalids in order to attack them but if i can attack them for, if if i can attack if i can take this guy out like for, like this if i can take two of them out then they're going to have two cocoons to deal with yeah this is going this is going really well um, if I can take two of them out, as I say, then they're going to have two cocoons to deal with, and that's going to mean they're not going to be able to take both of them out. They don't have the firepower for it, especially as I'm reducing their numbers quite nicely over here. So that's two of them. That's an, that's uh, two of them down this turn, and I've got still got a couple of guys left. Let's go after the captain as well because I feel like the sh I feel like he's more he's more dangerous um, because he can he can shoot, and the, and the shots seem to be more accurate and seem to do more damage. So if I can pull off a kill here, that'd be fantastic. But I don't think I can. No, they've uh, I've run out of run out of crystals to use this turn. Let's see what these guys plan. So he's gonna okay sh shot okay shot one of the crystals dead. That's unfortunate. So I've I have lost a, a unit at this point. But I might get some more. Yeah. So there we go. They're they're all now going to get hopefully gang up on these um, on these cocoons, and that means they're not going to be they're not attacking. Yes, if they're attacking the cocoons, they're not attacking the the, uh, the chrysalids. And also, if they attack different cocoons, then it spreads their damage around, and it means yeah. Oh, and if they miss, it's even better. But if they attack different ones, it spreads the damage around and means they're much less dangerous. So he's nice and poisoned. So that's taken another two off his health. That should make him a, a one hit kill now. At this point, I feel like I should probably go for the device over here and try and complete the mission. Um, but let's let's see who, who's got the range to get over there. Okay, the, he, these two both have, and then I'm sure one of these guys over here will have the range to scamper over this way. I'm not quite sure why I didn't get another chrysalid popping out of the the, um, the cocoons. To be honest, uh, I feel like I should have done, but I didn't. Let so let's go for the let's go for the objective now. So I reckon it's going to take two attacks. Yeah, two attacks to destroy that, and then we're done. And we can just mop up the remaining uh, the remaining enemies, and that'll be a lot a lot easier. If we go for the yes, the objective. So we'll take that out. Maybe I should have rushed in f uh, first chance I got and just run straight up to try and take this out. I don't know. Maybe we'll try that as sort of a secondary attempt at the mission, um, because those are, those are always fun to do. Get an idea of how things could have gone differently. Right for my next trick, I would like to take this guy out because he's nearly dead. I feel that finishing him off would be a good idea. So we'll run over like this. And there we go. Killed him, and he's going to cocoon up as well, presumably. And so now I've got... How many have I got left? Three, but I've also got... Oh, right, okay. So my cocoons... I need to tell the cocoons specifically to spawn chrysalids. So let's let's do that. Um, this is the first time I've played with chrysalids, so, you know, let's let's just go... Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but let's, let's, let's create as many of these as I can, because it seems like a good idea. Okay, that seems to be the end end, end, end of that. So um, over here, we haven't got any more guys. We haven't got any more guys at partial health. I think everyone is now at every, every, every target is now equivalent. So let's just let's let's just go for the slashing with all of them. 
There we go. Nice. Uh, and I want to carry on attacking this guy. Because, I, as I said, I'm sensible and I'm intelligent enough to know that even if it means this chrysalid has to go for a long run around all the way around through the junkyard there, that having everybody attack the same guy when he's already injured is the way to go. So we want to keep, keep, keep going for this guy until we manage to kill him, and then we'll move on to the next one. Uh, who else? Who else got a turn? You have. Yeah, okay, so you come around here, do another uh, another slash from wherever you want. I don't really care. There we go. Nice. We've killed another guy. What have we got left now? I think we've just got this guy, this, this chrysalid over here. And maybe, yes, we've still got another one. We can still spawn another one out as well. Do I get a turn with the one I've just spawned? I do. That's amazing. So, yeah, this is this is why we hate chrysalids so much in normal play. Because, if you, especially in the, in the original game, in the 1994 XCOM... If, you, if, you, if, you, if there are chrysalids on a map, especially if it's a terror mission, there's probably going to be about three times as many chrysalids by the time you've actually finished dealing with them all. So we've got some another one taken out. Is that all of the, is that all of the um, advent? I'm actually not. I think it might be. Oh no, there's there's two two left there. So that, that was I think that was one of them. Okay, and there's some and there's another three guys over here who are going to have to go and deal with who we who managed to not not to distract until this point. Okay. Oh, and there's that guy who's running away to join them as well. No, he's not. He's running around to, to attack this, my uh, my other cocoon over here. He is bloop turning into a cocoon. Excellent. So we'll spawn another chrysalid. I mean, to be honest, every every single cocoon I want to have spawn a chrysalid because why would I not? And that means that means I'm going to have a lot more units to play with, a lot more options, and I might as well just do this at the beginning and see what see how things go. Are there any more? Have I missed any cocoons? I think I have because I'm sure there was more than this. Yep, there's one. I've got so many units at this point. This is ridiculous. Okay, that seems to be about it as far as I can tell. So, um, right, let's go after... Well, let's... Actually, let's let's have the, all these guys, all these chrysalids run away to deal with the ones over here because they're a bit further away. So let's go after let's go after this guy because he's going to be an easy, a relatively easy target. So if I can kill him, then he's not going to be able to shoot in his next turn. It's only probably, hopefully, only going to take two attacks. Yeah, there we go. It's taken six of his... Six... We've taken three quarters of his health off there with, with that first attack. And now, hopefully, this one can run over and finish him. I think I've probably got enough chrysalids that I can take out everything I can reach. This one, this lancer up here is a worry, though, because I don't think I'm going to be able to get to him. He's too far away. Um, however, this one, I think I can get enough of them in that no matter how badly, at, how badly their accuracy goes, I'm still going to be able to um, finish him off. So if we run run around the back, just because we've got because we have the range on this this chrysalid. There we go. That's a yeah, another crit, so seven. So it's gonna he's dead next turn anyway. Um, okay, we'll use. Oh, can you get? No, you can't get over to that lancer. That's a shame. We'll bring you in to to deal with this one then. Get you in as close as possible. And that's a miss. Okay. Well, to be fair, it's a 70% hit chance. I can't be too upset that we get an occasional miss here and there. I think we've been doing quite well up until this point anyway. Um, okay, so it's an 80% to hit, but the but the uh, stun lancers come with a 10% defense, as it says at the bottom down there. And apparently, this is a squad site attack, which is interesting. Um, I'm, I guess that's because we don't we can't strictly speak and see that enemy. We have to run all the way over here first. So maybe that's not helping the uh, the aim ch chances as well. Um, so maybe, maybe so maybe that's a downside of having them always attack the furthest away enemy that they can possibly get to. However, I think through sheer force of numbers. It's going to be worth it. And even though, strictly speaking, I might not have necessarily needed to get that attack in there, I think it's worth it for a couple of reasons. One is that it brings him all the way over here so that he can then be close enough to that uh, this, this lancer to, to attack him. And we'll run, him, run this one over as well for the same reason. But also because if I kill them like if I kill them with the chrysalid rather than leaving them to get rather than leaving them to po die from poison, it means that we can then potentially spawn out some more out of the uh, cocoons. And if we can spawn more out of the cocoons, maybe that means I, I finish the mission with more units and therefore we'll get a higher score out of it. I don't know exactly how the game works for, for, for calculating all these sort of things, but it feel this, these feel like reasonable um, reasonable reasons to do things in slightly weird ways. Um, yeah, I feel like the more... Oh, there's another one over here. Okay, let's run you over here as well, next to that other chrysalid. He's, I've, I've got so many that I just can't... I can't keep track of how many... of which ones I've moved, which ones I haven't moved. But the, yeah, those two are the squad who went out to defeat, the, destroy the uh, the device right at the beginning of the uh, the previous turn. 
So uh, let's yeah, let's carry let's carry on just slashing away. There we go. It's another uh, yet another kill, and then all of these guys up here can then go charging forward. So it took three of three of them. Yes, three of them in it when it takes to, to, to get to the two hits. And that's about right for a seventy percent ch hit chance, to be honest. So I can't be too uh, can't be too salty about that. I'll run these guys round over here, round the back of this uh, container. That way, no matter which way the stun lancer goes, unless it actually runs away in completely the opposite direction, we're going to have a chance. We, we should. We, he's going to be running towards at least one of my squads. And in theory, roll of the dice. It should probably. It should take in th um, theoretically three chrysalids to get the kill. Now, it might not always be three. It might sometimes be uh, four or five. It might sometimes be... It might, if we get lucky, we might get two. I don't think we can get a kill with a single chrysalid, though. That's, that would be a pushing, pushing the bounds of probability a little bit too far. And jump. <laughs> and drop down. Right. So now what's he going to do? He's going to run out here and attack... What's he attacking? Okay, so he's attacking the cocoon again, which makes a certain amount of sense. He's trying He's trying to limit the, uh, the sheer number of... Um, of chrysalids that are going to come out and try and bite his face off, but you know, what, there's only so much of that you can do. Uh, I've got all of these cocoons that can spawn a million chrysalids. Since I think we're, um, all right, let's take that one. Since I think we're going to um, have killed all of the enemies at the end of this, let's have a quick tab round and see if I can find any more cocoons that haven't done all of their spawning yet. There was one I press tab too many times. Right, so let's spawn another crystal. Because, as I say, I have this theory that if I have the more the more units I have alive at the end of the um, end of the mission, potentially, the more points I'm going to get. Or maybe since that says crystal cocoon was killed, maybe they're going to cancel out. I don't know. Uh, we shall we shall see. So anyway, let's try let's try and kill this uh, this this, this uh, elite lancer. No. Okay, we've got two hits on him, and he hasn't dropped. Okay, I was thinking it only took uh, it only took two hits to kill them, but maybe that's uh, maybe that's if you get crits, and or if you get just generally if you get lucky. So let's send a third one in to finish him. Oh, and then a dodge from there. So, I mean, you know, it's 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 a good thing I've got quite a lot of chrysalids available here, and I'm not relying too much on any individual one. Although that said, if this guy doesn't get him, then we're going to really struggle because we're not going to be able to get any more round him. That's another dodge. You you, you lucky sod. Um. Okay, so up here, do we have? No, we actually can't. We can't get. We can't get in and slash him because there are no tar no more targets available. Uh, that seems a little bit mean. Uh, I guess that's why the lancer ran into that position. That was sort of kind of sneaky and tactical. Let's run another one of the chrysalids out here just to make sure there aren't any more um, enemies out this way on the map. This is a big map. I hope there aren't any more because it's going to take forever, to, forever running around trying to find them. Um, there's the edge, there's an edge over here, but let's run over this way anyway. I think I might just have to end turn, which is a bit of a shame because I was hoping to finish the mission slightly more quickly than this. You can run over this way, just again looking for any more advent. Climbing over everything on the way over there. No, it seems like it seems like we've probably got them all. We just can't well at least we found them all. We just can't get that last guy. That was a hell of a jump from that crystal. These, these these things are mobile, I approve of that. Um yeah, we've got this. We've just got this one guy left over here that we can't get at. He's got one piece of health left, and we can't attack him. And now this turn, he's probably going to kill one of my weaker, weaker chrysalids. Because I did notice this in the uh, in the previous mission when we were up against the chrysalids. The ones that have just spawned out of the um, out out of the cocoons only have four health, whereas the original ones that were sort of spawned in as part of the the, the map have significantly more. So. Yeah, we're just going to have to end turn at this point. We can't, we can't overwatch with the chrysalids and just let him have a have a stab. He's probably going to take on one of the weaker ones, and he's going to miss it, so that's all right. Oh no, he did nine damage, but he oh he went for one of the stronger ones because apparently he's an idiot. Then he died to the poison, and now we can find out how many uninjured soldiers we've got. Ten thousand points worth of them. Wow. Surviving soldiers, another six thousand points. I think I've done quite well on this mission for the uh, just on the sheer number of troops I had left. But let's have another go at it and see how it goes if we just try and run through the mission as quickly as possible. Just charge straight up the middle and attack the device first and then polish off all of the enemies. I have to admit, I don't actually expect this to go any differently. We'll still charge our chrysalids up the, um, up the, up the alleyway over here. Uh, stay just, we'll, we'll end up staying just out, out of um, sight range of the, um, of the advent troops. And then next turn we'll go charging straight past them. Um, we only need two of the chrysalids to make it to the device in order to destroy it. So I don't have any any worries about them getting there. 
And so I guess the rest of them might as well hang back and just deal with the, uh, the various advent troops that are available. But I think I'm quite tempted to con continue with the, the running forwards as fast as possible. Uh, and we'll, again, we'll take on the, um, the advent soldiers first, and then, the, uh, and then perhaps the captain, or officer, or whatever he's, called, whatever he's called, and then deal with the stun lancers as a lower priority threat. Because they seem to be not particularly accurate when they do attack, and, um, and al but also harder to kill because they've got more health and a bit of armour. So... The idea is to pri prioritise as carefully as we can, just going after the, uh, the the weaker enemies. Oh, he spotted us. Now that's mildly unfortunate, but I don't think it actually matters. It means they'll all scatter and go into their hidey positions like this. Um, what I want to do now is then just run forward. The guys at the front, especially, I want these them to charge forward as much as possible. Yes, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll find another uh, another pod of troops, but I don't care. We just want to run forwards, get them down here, and get into a position that we're, so we're ready to run in and attack the device in the next turn, as soon as, soon as we possibly can. Yes, we've woken up every single advent around, but that was gonna—that pretty much happened anyway in the last the last time we did it. Uh, maybe we didn't alert these ones immediately. I don't—I don't really remember exactly what happened. But as it is, because the chrysalids have only got um, a melee attack, we more—we have to go running forwards in order to attack. So. Yeah, we might as well. I think this pod, that's the final pod that we found after we'd already destroyed the uh, the radio relay last time. So those ones we wouldn't have triggered. So we do, we do have more active enemies. Not insurmountably so. So let's continue. Right, so we've got two of them in position here. Let's run a third one up and maybe probably even a fourth one as well. Just in case things go very badly and all of my and, and, and the advent advent all attack my chrysalids fairly effectively. At that point, we have a couple of cho we at this point we have a choice. We have three chrysalids left over here. We could either go after this soldier in here and attempt to get him down and producing more chrysalids as soon as possible. Or we run forwards and join these guys and don't do any attacks on this turn. Um, and try and find another another basic trooper. I think there's another one. There is another one around somewhere. That, um, yeah, here, here's the second one, and there is the officer as well somewhere. But I think we need to get. I think we need to start doing some attacking. So let's reckon on going in and doing an attack on. Yes, let's go after. Let's go after this poor sod over here, and hopefully with just two of the first two of them, we can get him killed. Yeah, there we go. There's the first six damage. That's what we. That's what we want. And then with another one, we can come in. Hopefully, finish him with this with this chrysalid. And that will get my foot. There's some more troop. Oh dear! No, we we missed with that attack. So that means a third one will also have to go in and, and hopefully finish him off. That means we'll get a. Um, that means we'll get a cocoon, which will hopefully then be prioritised by all the troops around us, as or at least as many of them as can. And so they'll leave my my actual soldiers alone, and we'll see how this goes. So he did some sort of weird slidey thing up the back there, but I mean he got he got an attack that missed. So that's fine. He did five damage to the cocoon. Now the cocoons have a lot more health than anything else, so that's actually actually kind of a good thing. Uh, what are these? What are these guys all going to do? That's the question. Okay, they're sh okay. They're shooting at the uh, at the at the uh, cocoon. So that's um, I mean that's probably a probably a good thing from our point of view. Again, it's the cocoon is is tanking all of the damage for us, uh, and. and Oh, it's still, still taking it. And the cocoon is worth is worth two chrysalids, but it's not worth two chrysalids just yet. Okay, and we're getting the, the actual assault troops attack now. We've lost five health there. That's not the end of the world. We can... And, there, and because the AI is a bit dumb, as we discussed earlier, they're, attacking, they're all attacking different chrysalids, or at least so far they seem to be attacking different chrysalids. Um, that guy is just wasting his turn. That's smart. If they are all attacking different chrysalids, then that's great because it means we have um, we can spread the damage out between them and nobody gets killed. It potentially means less uh, points at the end for uninjured chrysalids, but I suspect that it's probably still worthwhile. Now these guys might be suffering from tactical analysis, which is where they try and um, where they only have one move on their initial turn. Something has caught fire. I don't know why, but it has. I don't know what to do about that. Okay, so we now have a turn. We will spawn a chrysalid because that's what you do. We will then, up here, priority number one is to wreck this thing. Um, we'll come around the back because we have the range. Priority, absolute priority one is to wreck this thing because that's that's what makes this run different from the previous one. So we've done five damage there. Now we take a second chrysalid and we try and repeat that. Do exactly, this, basically the same thing again. Hopefully we'll do another five damage. It can't dodge. I think it's guaranteed. I think it's a guaranteed kill. Yes, there we go. So that's now that's now wrecked. We've completed the main objective. And because we completed it on turn three this time, instead of turn four, was it? I I, I forget, as I say. Um, 
then we'll hopefully get a few more points for that. Now we have a tactical decision to make. I have two chrysalids up on the front line here who could potentially come over and attack this guy. Uh, they've easily got the range to do it, and he's the easiest target here, and, and again, as we said before, there's a potential for creating more chrysalids. These ones back here... Oh, can one of one more of them... No, no, can't quite... Can't quite... Ooh, let's just... Yes, can also come over. At least one of those can also come over here as well. So we've got potential... I think... Uh, so we do have definitely a good chance of killing him. We've then got lots of them down here. At this point, the targets all become a bit more similar. Um... The question is, who is who is a better target, a, a lancer or, a, or an officer? I think the officer is a better one to go for, because I think he's more dangerous and possibly easier to kill. He's got more health, 50% more, but he doesn't have that armour. And so depending on how the chrysalid targeting goes, uh, we might we might do slightly better. Also, I think the, uh, the, the officer has less dodge. Uh, so, let's come round here. Do a stabby stabby from over here with this guy. There we go, six. That's, that's what we like to see. Um, and so one more one more good hit and he's down. Um, well, one more hit at all, I think, and he's down. So I'll try and move to there, uh, attack from there. I'm not. I'm impressed they're going through that window without breaking it. And there we go. So we've got another one of those down. That's another chrysalid. Nice. And we've now got four of the guys up here, and that is hopefully enough to take out a lancer or maybe the officer. Over here, what can we do with these guys? So you, how far can you get? Can you get? Can you get to the officer? You can't get to the officer. Okay. Uh, what about you? You can, but I think you're going to be the only one who can. So I think it's not worth going after that officer. However, um, uh, we've got we've got the four chrysalid attack squad, and it's going to be a five chrysalid attack squad next turn because we've got a cocoon. So those can all mob the officer and almost certainly take him out, and then start working their way through the lancers. So I think over here we might as well just be lazy and take out the lancer who's a r lancers who are right on our doorstep and just start just start stabbing really. Uh, any of these, uh, although we'll, yeah, because uh, and there's two of them down here as well. So we'll we'll take actually no, bet, I changed my mind a little bit. Firstly, okay, so much for changing my mind. What we'll do down here is we'll uh, we'll we'll try and gank this one with all with all the chrysalids that are at the back. Can you get to, can you get to that that you, you can't you actually can't get to him. Okay, so in order to move out there, you'd have to go. I don't know what sort of route, but whatever it is, it's too far. Um, can you literally only attack one? You can. Hmm. Um, and if we don't... Yeah, so the move would have to be along here and then round to here. And that's that's the limit of the, how far it can move. Or possibly coming around this way. And again, from here, there's no useful attack. So, I don't know. Let's let's take the attack here. I'm not sure whether this is a good idea. But he can't... He can't I think it's better to do an attack than not to do an attack. Um... And he can't get at any at any at anything else. So this one over here uh, is that's the one out of actions. Okay, next chrysalid. Uh, given that, you might as well attack as well and, and just take just start start whittling away at this lancer. If we get in a really good hit there, then he's dead next turn whether he likes it or not. Um, but I think we're going to need the third hit from the other chrysalid. And as I say, I'd rather. Oh, alternatively, we'll just straight up miss. I would rather get the um, cocoon if I can. A cocoon hit is better than a um, better than a poison death. Because it gets me more chrysalids, but he's, yeah, he's survived a bit too well there from my, uh, from my point of view. Okay, so he's attacking the uh, the chrysalid uh, cocoon again. Oh, and he's killed the cocoon. That's a, that's a shame. That one's running away, which, to be honest, is fairly sensible. Oh, he's running away to get this to get at this cocoon. I suspect that that cocoon is now going to probably absorb all of the attacks from basically every, everything into, until it's dead. Oh no, no, he's, he's taken out one of my actual chrysalids. Ooh, that's um, slightly different. Oh, and there's another uh, trooper over there as well. So we should try and go after that one next turn if we can. And we'll see what all of these stun lancers do. Oh, this one's a interesting. They're um, they're changing it up a bit. They're not all going for the uh, going for the cocoon this time. They seem to be attacking the chrysalids a lot more um, a lot more aggressively. And yeah, very much more aggressively because they managed to get another a second kill. So, things are not going... Well, I don't know. I, I feel like things are going worse this time than they did last time. Because we're getting more chrysalids killed. However, we did manage to get the... Um, where's, what are you doing? We did manage to get the, the, the device destroyed much, much more early on. So, maybe it's not entirely bad? I don't know. We'll just have to see how things go when we, uh, when we get our turn and uh, get to try and... Try and do things. What's a little bit alarming is these guys seem to be taking the poison damage at the beginning of my turn rather than at the beginning of their turn, which isn't what I like. Isn't how I think these, this, how I expect this to happen. 
Anyway, we've spawned in another chrysalid over here. Is that my only cocoon at the moment? I think it is. Okay. So, plan A, we're sticking with the policy, sticking with plan A of going after the troopers first because they are the weakest and therefore the most valuable. The easiest to kill and they give us the most chrysalids when they respawn. Uh, when they, when they, and they give us the most chrysalids from the cocoons when they get killed. So, we'll carry on with that. Give me that chrysalid. There we go. And it's a miss. But fortunately, I believe I just spawned in another one over here. Yes, that's the one that was just, uh, just, just born from the cocoon. So, hopefully, we'll, uh, as your very, very first action in life, we'd like you to come over and create another cocoon. Just like that. There we go. You can see why, as I say earlier, you can see why I hate chrysalids quite so much in, uh, in normal single player. This is, um, they're absolutely horrible. Okay, so over here, we've, that guy ran away uh, in a sort of a bit of a brave Sir Robin kind of thing. So we'll see if we can kill this one off. If we can, that'd be great, because... Yeah, there we go. Nice. That's another another straight-up kill there. Um, and now we've got... Uh, so we don't need to try and run another one into this sort of dead-end alleyway. Now, we can run these guys out of here, and I think we're now down to... There's just the stun lancers and the officer who's gone into hiding somewhere. Yes, all the way over here. So I would like to attack him next, but it looks like... Uh, could possibly get to here and yeah, I could get to here and attack, um, but I think that might be the only crystal that's going to be able to get there. Yes, so we don't have a chance on a kill there, and I think the kill is the most valuable thing. So let's take this one. Come over here. Oh, he can't get to the and he can't get to the stun lancer at all either. So we've got a choice. Between, I think getting the kill is better than get just wounding an officer. So I'm going to come over here, try and get the kill from this crystal hit. Oh, there's one here who's on Overwatch. Cheeky sod. Okay, well, that's caused a wound, but not a death, so I'm kind of okay with that. We've got the kill there that I wanted, uh, and I think I think that was probably probably worth running the gauntlet like that. There's not, it's not like we could have got rid of the Overwatch any other way, is it? Uh, now let's continue with Operation Attack, kill the officer. So you see there, that was an 80% hit chance rather than the 70% I had with the uh, with the other uh, on, on, I guess on the on the Lancer. So there's a slightly better chance of a hit there. And it looks like we're doing six damage. So if we if we could get another hit in, that would be a fatality. I don't think we can though. So let's run this one to here and attack this lancer on the way through. It's not going to be a kill, but I think it's a valuable hit anyway because it's an attack. It means we get in a hit that we wouldn't get in otherwise, and it gets the chrysalid to roughly the sort of area where I was trying to get it to. I only got two two damage though, which is a bit of a shame. Okay, so the officer is marking by the looks of it, marking the the um. I'm not sure what... Oh, marking the, uh, the cocoon over there. That's, that's sort of expected. Now everyone else is going to attack it. And they've got better attacks on the cocoon now, which is a bit of a shame um, because of the officer's mark. And so they're, has, they're actually managing to hit it this time, uh, which is why they managed to destroy that one. So, yeah, that's a little... It's, it's just a little bit unfortunate, but, you know, it's not... It's, it, it, it's going to happen. The, the, they're going to try and do their best to destroy the cocoons because they know that the cocoons just mean more chrysalids. What's he going to do? He's coming running over this way again. Okay. So, I think, thinking tactically... Oh, he stunned that one, cheeky sod. Right, so I think, thinking tactically, the idea of, of coming in out and um, and trying to destroy the um, the device first has meant that my chrysalids are taking a lot more hits. They're taking a lot more damage. But, it's possible it's going to be worth it because of the additional um, points that we get from destroying the, the, um, the radio device much a turn sooner than we did before. Um, we shall see. We shall see, actually. It'll be interesting to see whether the score is higher or lower this time. Um, I would like to kill the... I would like to kill the officer, please. Stop panning my camera around. Stop it. Give me control back of my computer. There we go. So we'd like to, we'd like to kill the officer, because... Oh. Okay, that was a bit dodgier than I, I hoped. What about you? Can you get round here and kill him? Yes, you can. You get you only get one move, but a chrysalid's, a chrysalid's action can be a move and attack. Oh, but he's disorientated, so it was probably a lower chance of attacking. I didn't actually see. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of okay with this, because I do have enough of them to come round and finish him off like that. So we've got rid of the officer now. And now it's just a case of, let's try and find some injured uh, lancers, because they're all... Basically, the lancers are all functionally equivalent now. Um, we just want to take out them, take them out as quickly as possible. They're, they're actually not. We've got multiple different types. So if we look at this one, this guy's only got eight health because he's an, an, a heavy lancer, whereas as is that one. Whereas this one is an elite lancer and therefore has twelve health, so probably does more damage as well. So, but I think I think it's worth going for the um, for the weaker guys first and just trying to take them out. And this one over here is already injured. So let's let's start with the uh, the chrysalids that are nearby. 
because there's no point in running away from one who's nearby, running away from a, a nearby target to go and get a further away one, I think. So we'll try and kill him. And I feel like, I mean, we've got we've got enough of them in this area that hopefully, he keeps dodging though. These these lancers are a bit, they're a bit dodgy, a bit good at dodging. So let's, uh, let's spawn a chrysalid. There we go, just like that. Oh, Alright, let's spawn one over there as well, just because it's reminding me that I can. Then over here, we've got this chrysalid left. Let's let's try and take out this lan this uh, this heavy lancer. There we go. That's the hit I wanted, and uh, and taking him out nicely, just what I wanted. Um, so now, what, what do we have? We have we have an a, an embarrassment of, of uh, chrysalids all all over here that are just in a in a bit of a silly place. And we don't really, and I don't know if they're going to be able to get out. Um, so. <laughs> Well, they are going to be able to get out eventually, but it's going to take them a while. They're going to have to run all the way through the building like this. And this might be my fault. I'm, it's possible I could have created a bit more space around the uh, cocoon before I spawned them. But anyway, we, we, need, we need to get them back out this way and in, into back out to join, join, the, join the chrysalid party. And there ain't no party like a chrysalid party. So now we've got one left here. Okay, so again, once again, I think it's worth going for the, uh, for the weaker of the enemies. We've got a... I don't think we've got any chance of, get, of getting a kill here. No, especially because he's going to dodge like that. But we have poisoned him. Um, oh, we've got another crystal around here as well. Oh, no, no, that's another cocoon. Boom. Okay, there we go. That's another cocoon. <laughs> and it counts as a kill, which is a little bit disappointing, but never mind. Uh, so now we'll, we'll see if we can... Um, no, go for the other one. Yeah, go for that one, because he's already injured and he's got less health. So... If you can get a full, if you can get a crit, oh, couldn't get a, couldn't even get a hit. I was going to say, if that had been a, um, a crit, then we'd have uh, might have killed him. If it had been a miss, if it had been a, a normal hit, then he'd have died from poison. But no such luck. So they're all going out after the um, cocoons again, I think. Yeah, and nice happily, they're splitting their attacks between the cocoons, which means they're probably not going to kill any of them. Um, and I approve of that. But they're also missing the chrysalids they're attacking as well. So again, approve of that. Yeah, the chrysalids seem to have quite good dodge scores. I mean, I haven't been able to, uh, I haven't seen what their dodge scores actually are, but they're doing pretty well, so I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Right, so over here, what can we do? Well, we can, um, we can spawn a chrysalid, like this. <laughs> this is crazy. I get so many troops on this mi this mission because just because of the uh, this chrysalid pod spawn thing. Uh, no, give me the. I can just keep spawning these guys in. Uh, they are uh, with the with the sort of target rich environment I have, and because I had nine chrysalids to start with, I'm pretty sure I'm producing chrysalids faster than they're able to, much faster than they're able to kill them. Um, so just going ridiculously well. Yes, there's another one over there. Is that is that cocoon there given finished yet? I I don't know. And I might actually have enough chrysalids at this point just to finish this mission in in this turn. Let's find out. So what have we got over here? We've got. We've got one stun lancer here who is um, still at still at, no no he's at partial health. Oh yeah, this is the one I was attacking last turn with uh, with limited success. So let's let's just no not that one, uh, not that one, not that one, not that one. Yes, that one. There we go. That's another cocoon for me. <laughs> um, I mean, we've got another three enemies left by the looks of it. Um, at least three in this sort of area. So yeah, let's just go after whatever we can. Um, it it kind of doesn't matter. We just want to get in and do as much damage as we can. Okay, that was a tough one. He's a twelve. I think they're all twelve pointers now because I was concentrating on the weaker ones before. Um, you can wait. I think let's bring in one from over here. It'd be nice if they'd actually do as they were told rather than just making it up as they go along. Because I I came over here and I clicked on this chrysalid, but apparently clicking on this chrysalid meant do an attack on that one. Um, so yeah, let's squeeze them as many in around this guy as I can, because my biggest limiting factor here is going to be when they when they miss like that, and I then can't get at them because there's nowhere else to put a chrysalid around them. Um, I've run out of, 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 of targets over here, so let's bring one of these in. If I attack on the diagonal here, like that, then I'm getting in as many as I possibly can around the one who's... who's squeezed himself up against the uh, container there and there's room for one more to attack and then if I kill this guy here then we'll have room for one more one 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 more one more uh, no not you uh, fine I mean it it kind of doesn't matter who does what they're all all my chrysalids are functionally identical except this one who's got less health all of the troopers are functionally identical we've got this guy huddled in the middle here um, 
now I can so I can now bring potentially uh, yeah let's bring the ones in from over let's bring the crystals over from over from this way there's no point in bringing them in from the opposite side of the world can you get a kill in no you can't um. All right, let's bring him this one forwards because he's 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 the one who spawned who spawned in the in the corridor and therefore needs to run a mile to get out of it. That was because yeah, there was, there was a stun lancer in that corridor who I killed in order to get in order to get the um, the cocoon. Uh, you're out of actions. You've got you've got to turn left, so you can come over and also attack this trooper. Uh, no, you can't. You haven't got the range. Helpful. Let's bring you to here then. I'll keep you slightly out of the way. Um, yeah, there we go. And now from over here, yes, hit. Now we've got the range. So we've got two left, and this one is nearly dead, and is, yeah, he's now dead. Excellent. It's just this one over here. And we've got room to get quite a lot of chrysalids around him, so I think we're probably going to be okay here. And let's go around the back. I said, I said, when I say let's go, get, well, fine, I don't care. How do you only do one damage? I mean, come on. Okay, you can come around the back and attack from there. Oh, it's a good thing I didn't run it all the way around into the into the very back corner because then this one wouldn't be able to get in there and do that. And four damage is quite respectable. We only need two more of those to to, uh, to take him down. So you can attack from here on this corner, and there's room for four more chrysalids. So we need we need a fifty percent hit rate, assuming that we don't uh, assuming that we don't run out of chrysalids. And I don't think we're going to run out. We do seem to have quite a lot of them uh, still remaining here. So I think we're probably going to be okay, and this this is now going to be the last turn. There we go. That's the hit I was looking for. So now we get a load of a load of extra points in here. Now, oh, I <laughs> I forgot to go around and spawn in extra uh, chrysalids before I kill them. I just got a bit overexcited. I I could have had a few more troops, but I don't think that really made much of a difference. Still, comparing the scores from the two runs is very interesting. The first one was much higher, actually over 100%. I think this was because I had fewer enemies active and therefore lost fewer cocoons because we outnumbered them more. This more than made up for taking an extra turn to get to the relay. That was fun. I think the chrysalids were more interesting than the berserkers, but I still prefer having a bit more tactical play available to me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again on Wednesday for some more XCOM 2 when I'll be con continuing the campaign, and on Monday for the Vactorio stream. Bye bye.